What is going on, everybody? It is March 26th. It is a Monday slate. And today is the first day of the rest of my life. Today is the first day that I am not going into my former 9 to 5. And today is my first day as the director of content at awesomeo.com. So I'm pretty excited. If you haven't been following me in the past and you're just following me now uh, due to seeing some of my posts getting tagged and retweeted from Awesomeo himself, Alex. Um, yeah, this is a, a big change for me, but uh, you're still going to get the same sort of video uh, moving forward, still working on uh, transitioning the branding and everything. Um, but we're going to have more video content, uh, more written content, and by more written content for me, I mean actual written content, something that I haven't had the time to be able to do <clears throat> um, due to my prior commitments. But now, I'm wide open, everybody. Uh, so... If you were sick of me before, I apologize, but you're going to be super sick of me moving forward because I'm going to be everywhere at all times. Um, I'm glad this is just a five-game slate. It gives me a little bit of time to just chill today, transition, but um, let's just dive in. First up, we've got Hornets hosting the Knicks. Uh, Hornets 117.25 implied total is first. They are 11.5 point favorites at home uh, against the Knicks. Ooh, um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to not like, you know, some of the main guys for the Hornets tonight. Not the best matchup um, from, like, a big games perspective, but, you know, it's the Knicks D. Huge implied total for a five-game set. So we've got Kemba at... 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. I think he'd be fine in a cash scenario. Um, as the season slowly winds down, uh, you know, I think we'll see, you know, a little bit less Kemba with the Hornets having very little to play for. No need to take any crazy risks. But I think he looks fine, uh, especially if, the Knicks are going to continue to give more time to guys like Trey Burke and less time to uh, guys like Frankie Nilakina. Um, Nilakina is significantly better on defense. They just refuse to play him any real minutes. So that's fine by me. The less he gets, uh, you know, the better the matchup it's going to be for Kemba. Uh, Dwight should really eat here. Um, Kylo Quinn is up in the air, so this would likely be just a lot of Cantor or the Unicornet. And if that's the case, I mean, Dwight should be in a great spot. Cantor, obviously not known for his defense. If he was, he'd probably still be on the Thunder or, you know, insert whatever team he was on previously here. Uh, so Dwight at 8,800, um, 8,700 on DK, I think looks great. Only problem... Um, with Dwight tonight, or not necessarily a problem, but only major issue is that center is absolutely loaded. Not so much of an issue for DraftKings peeps, but there's not anyone over 10k at any other position on uh, on FanDuel. There's three on center, and that doesn't even include Dwight or Nikola Jokic. So. Center is going to be a really tricky spot. Um, everything else is going to be really interestingly balanced. You'll see small forward. Basically, everybody is the same color in my uh, in my color scale here. That doesn't make for a, a fun night. So I like Dwight, but there's a lot to like at center. There's a lot of decisions to be made. Oh, I just burped in the middle of that. My bad, guys. You know, it happens. Look, uh, for for those of you that are new to this, um, you know, uh, weird shit happens from time to time. You, you roll with the punches. I like Dwight. I like Kemba. Uh, Jeremy Lamb, I think, still looks good on DK at 6100 uh, At 7000 that's probably a price that I'll struggle to pay a lot for. Um, even in all of these games with Batum out, he hasn't hit 35 fantasy points, which is where his value would need to be. It's odd that his price is even going up more. So 
Not somebody that I'm totally in love with tonight, but he's functionally fine. Um, feel free to use Marvin Williams as a punt if need be. Um, you can probably talk yourself into Dwayne Bacon as a punt if need be. And then uh, MKG. It's always good for like a really weird GPP type game. Now that he's minimum salary on FanDuel, you know, could be worth a flyer there as well. Another reason to love Dwight, I just noticed it now, uh, does get to the line a lot. Obviously not the best free throw shooter in the world, but him and Kemba do get to the line at a pretty good clip. Um, and the Knicks are 26th in the league at defensive foul rate, so could be a chance to get uh, a couple extra freebies. Now for the Knicks, 105.75 implied total. Uh, that would be 7th on the night. Um... You know, not a great matchup. Charlotte's solid on D. Without Batum, it's a little bit worse. Um, nothing stands out as particularly good or particularly bad, in my opinion. Uh, we've got Tim Hardaway at 6,100 on FanDuel. 7,000 on DK, which is insane. Uh, I like Hardaway at 6,100 on FanDuel. I think that he looks like a, a really nice GPP play on this five-game slate. Uh, Trey Burke, 4,900 and 4,800. Um, last three games, 26 minutes, 31 minutes, 27 minutes. Uh, if that continues, I think he's very underpriced um, if he's going to be getting that sort of playing time. He's one of the better values on the board today, if you think those minutes stick. Um, which, you know, judging by the Knicks, you never know. It shouldn't be. Like, he should be playing the least. And they should be playing Moutier and Nilakine. Well, they should be playing Nilakine the 30 minutes a game and just taking their lumps. But for some strange reason, uh, they won't do that. So, whatever. It's the Knicks. Can't be surprised there. Uh, Beasley getting a little bit of an additional run, even with Lance Thomas back. Uh, so keep an eye on those minutes there. I would only use him in a GPP. And even then, I don't think he looks that great. Um, keep an eye on the health of Kyle O'Quinn. Uh, if he doesn't play, I think I'll probably bump up Cantor's minutes a little bit. Right now I have him in, but if he's out, uh, Cantor will look pretty solid. Um, 31, 33, and 27 minutes in his last three, so if he can get a couple extra minutes there, will be a nice value center um, on a night with a lot of uh, high-priced guys. And then finally, if O'Quinn does play, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. He's probably not in play in any sort of like realistic scenario, but GPP flyers, Kylo Quinn tends to uh, accumulate points in bunches. And um, going against a potential second unit uh, for Charlotte, you know, something to keep, a, keep an eye on. Ultimately, I'll have a little bit of Tim Hardaway uh, in GPPs, but Trey Burke is the guy uh, for me from the Knicks tonight. Pistons hosting the Lakers. Uh, Pistons, four and a half point favorites at home. Um, really solid matchup. Uh, Pistons looking good across the board here. I mean, as good as the Pistons can look, at least. Uh, Lakers are just sort of a morgue right now. They're basically running seven deep. They've got four guys playing like 40 minutes a game. So, uh, first two guys to look at, obviously. Drummond, 10-2 on FanDuel, 9-7 on DK. Uh, had a really good game uh, two nights ago. Went for 69. <laughs> nice. Um, no reason to think that he wouldn't have a big game here unless he just doesn't care. Um, I don't have any problem paying up to 10-2. There's definitely upside in that price. Um, not the safest bet. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily feel really comfortable about drumming in a cash scenario tonight, but uh, I wouldn't have any problems having him in GPPs. And then Blake, 8,800 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. Um, that's probably a little bit too expensive for me. I know that he had that stretch of three straight 50-point games. I mean, you need every bit of that uh, at this point. So I guess in a GPP, it's okay. I wouldn't trust him to get to value um, in a cash game tonight, especially as the Pistons have like less and less to play for. Um, 
yeah, I, I'm going to try to not have a ton of Blake. I haven't seen how all the salaries are going to shake out. We'll see that when we run the optimizer. But it doesn't strike me as a spot where I'm going to be particularly heavy. I will be, I assume, depending on the salary changes, particularly heavy on the Lakers. Uh, Ish Smith. Uh, this one is definitely a spot where I'm, I want to take a closer look. He only got 23 minutes in the last game. Um, Reggie Jackson's minutes are ramping up a bit. Uh, but at 5,200, I think that Ish could still be worth a little bit of a flyer. Um, he can he can get up into those that 30 section. You just need to worry about how much they're going to ramp up Reggie Jackson. I can't imagine that they're going to want to get Reggie Jackson playing anything crazy in terms of minutes. I would expect 20 to 25 to be where he's at. There's no need to rush back a guy to a team that's out of it. Um, you know, they need Reggie Jackson to be healthy next year. So I would expect Ish to still get a, a pretty solid allotment of minutes. I've got him in for 28 right now. And if that holds, um, I think that he could be a, a nice value point guard tonight. Um, you know, Reggie Bullock and Kennard are, are worth flyers in GPPs. Uh, Kennard in particular, last three games, 30, 25, 33, all of those would be um, very solid. Um, I don't have a problem with it. I know that he's graded out as an F there. It's just sort of a function of the grades. Um, doesn't necessarily represent the fact that he could be played as a GPP flyer. Um, you know, it, it, it's just the Pistons. They don't, they're not that sexy of a team in fantasy, but... Uh, there's going to be opportunities out there with the Lakers being as depleted as they are. Now, speaking of said Lakers, they are playing everybody a ton of minutes. And no sign of Ingram being back tonight, so I don't really see this changing. Um, KCP, own him in bunches. Kyle Kuzma, own him in bunches. Lonzo Ball, own him in bunches. Julius Randle, Brooke Lopez. I'm going to have all of these guys a ton. I had them all a ton two nights ago. I had them all a ton four nights ago. Um, the only difference between that and now is that I also had Isaiah Thomas, which sucked four nights ago. But now he's out, so you know, feel free to load up on these guys. They're all in great spots. They're getting tons of minutes. Um... I don't really see a choice in the matter. It's not as if the Pistons are any sort of great shakes defensively. Hold on, guys. Hi, wife. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Love you, too. Shout out to the elusive wife. Um, yeah, you, you just you need to play a lot of Lakers. There's, there's no real... You don't really have much choice. Um, if guys are going to be getting 38-plus minutes, and they're actually good, like KCP, Kuzma, Ball, Randall, Lopez, these are... These are talented basketball players that are also getting heavy, heavy minutes. Um, you really just don't have a choice. You have to play a bunch of Lakers. And I'm cool with it. So, yeah, play them all. Uh, if we're looking for priorities... Got a cough. I would say... Kuzma would be my number one. KCP feels really safe to me. Um, I'd go Kuzma, KCP, Lopez, Randall, Ball, but I don't want that to be any sort of uh, indictment on anyone. Order doesn't really matter. They're going to come up a lot. Uh, Sixers, 114.25 implied total is second. They are six-point favorites at home against the Denver Nuggets. Um, this one's a tricky one because I really don't like playing the Sixers in fantasy. I just I can't seem to ever get Embiid or Simmons right, save for that one really ridiculous Simmons game where he had like 35 fantasy points in the first quarter. Uh Simmons is 9,800 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. I don't really mind him on DK. I can't imagine playing him at 9,800 on FanDuel. Um, you know, has had a really good stretch two games last week in the mid-50s, but you need a perfect storm for him to get there. 
with his lack of outside shooting, it's hard for him to really accumulate points in bunches. So, uh, for me, he's not someone that I'm going to be super interested in tonight. Uh, I'd rather allocate my money elsewhere. But that could change when I run the optimizer and see sort of how the salary information shakes out. Like I said, lots of small forward similarities. Um, so it might be a case where there's just extra money. Embiid at 10-3, uh, 9,400 on DK. He's got the best center matchup of the night. Um, six big games, two and a half monsters. Uh, makes me pretty interested here. Three straight games in the mid-30s. Uh, prior to that, he had gone 50 or higher in uh, four straight. It's a GPP look for me. Um, I don't. I wouldn't feel comfortable running out and beating cash at all, uh, particularly when you have so many options tonight at center. But for 10-3 in a GPP, um, I'm going to have a, a nice amount of Embiid. I think that's a pretty good value for what he could provide. Uh, Saric at 5,900 just hasn't been the same lately. Lots of games in the mid-20s, which is not going to get you there when you're priced at 5,900. Uh, it's probably not for me. Covington, 5,900 and 5,800. Um, it's a great matchup. Number one small forward matchup. Um, I'll definitely have him as a flyer in some GPPs, but I'm not super duper confident of him. I could see him hitting like 26 and being a little, you know, having his value a little depressed. Uh, for Redick and Bellinelli and Ilyasova, uh, there, there's nothing there for me. So I'm going to look at Embiid most. Uh, I'll have a little tiny bit of Covington, and then um, I hope that I don't have Simmons. <laughs> Just never happy with it. For the Nugs, uh, Nuggets 108.25 implied total, which is sixth. Uh, it's a terrible matchup. Dead last point guard, small forward, power forward, and center. So that's kind of terrifying. Um, we've got Wilson Chandler at 6,000. You know, if he, like, he's had two games at 40 and 48 in the past two weeks. So you have to think about taking a flyer on him in a GPP, but you can't play him in cash, in my opinion. 19, 20, 21, like he has craters. Uh, so GPP only, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Jamal Murray's probably not the answer for me here. 7,500 on FanDuel. Uh, coming off a solid 44-point game uh, two nights ago, three nights ago, whatever. He's been relatively hot, a couple 38s, but that's just at value. I'd rather have Will Barton at 7,100 than Jamal Murray at 75. And then if we talk about Jokic, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Um, I like him a lot more on DraftKings than I do on FanDuel. If I'm paying that $9,500 freight on FanDuel and he's my only center... I mean, I need him to hit 50, and that's possible, but, you know, he's done it four times in his past eight games. I, I'm just nervous of the matchup and, and getting Philly, but Denver needs every bit of this game. They need to win. They have no choice. Um, so you have to assume that Jokic is going to do whatever it takes. Uh, so I don't have a problem having Jokic. I think I would prefer to have Embiid in this game. Um, just because Embiid gets to go at Jokic and not himself. Uh, obviously, there is a chasm between these two guys defensively. Take a sip of the coffee that I'm back on now. Tried to minimize my slurp as much as I could. Um, and then Millsap, uh, coming off that 51-point game, went for the solid 14.7. Lovely stuff. Uh... He's average for me. 7000 on FanDuel is probably a little pricey. 6100 on DK lets you move around a little bit. So I like Barton. Uh, I, I know I kind of glanced over him, but went for 48 and 47 in two of his last four with Gary Harris out. Uh, I'm willing to take those shots at big games um, when he's at 7100 So Barton for me, small bits of Jokic, uh, 
Chandler and Murray only in a small amount of lineups. Timberwolves hosting the Grizzlies. Uh, there's not a line on this. I've got Timberwolves favored by 10. That would be the third highest implied total. That could move higher because the Grizzlies are atrocious. Um, Towns and Wiggins probably going to be in some lineups for me. 10-4 on Towns, 9,300 on DK. Uh, oh, sorry, guys. Towns went for 55 in back-to-back -back games. Um, followed that up with a 30-pointer in 23 minutes. No reason not to like him here. I know Memphis is solid defensively, but you know Towns is just going to be able to do whatever he wants out there. Um, I'd rather have Towns than Embiid. Uh, Towns on FanDuel, $100 more expensive. Uh, I think there's a lot more upside in a Towns game here today than, uh, than an Embiid game. Not a lot, but, you know, that's just the way I'm leaning. Um, Wiggins at 7,000. You know, I, I like the matchup a lot. Um, he's just so one-dimensional, it's kind of tough. Only saving grace is that Memphis puts people on the line more than any other team in the league. So there's definitely an opportunity for Wiggins to rack up free throws. Um Bielitsa, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Uh, a real rough game in his last one, but does get it up into 35s. He's at 40 and 38. So, again, GPP only for me, um, but I'll have a solid amount of him. Just because of the matchup, you know, getting the Grizzlies, not exactly terrifying. And uh, everybody on at small forward sort of looks the same, so I'm going to try to play the matchups as much as I can. And then for Jeff Teague, uh, I'm generally indifferent on Teague. Um, somebody's going to go crazy here for the Wolves. I fully expect that. But 7400 on FanDuel is a pretty pretty healthy price tag for Teague. So I think the C is a, a perfectly acceptable rating. And then for Taj, um, 5300 You know, He just went for 30 two games ago. I'm all over that. 27. Uh, it's a GPP play again, but I think that he could fill up a stat sheet really well tonight. So Towns for me, big time. Um, I'll have small bits of Wiggins, Bielitsa, Teague, and Gibson scattered through everything. Memphis, I don't... I mean, who knows who's even playing. Um, Briante Weber got no minutes. Now Kobe Simmons is playing again. Uh, ben McLemore might play, might not play. Who knows what Chandler Parsons is doing? Um, look, Marcus Gasol seventy eight hundred. If he plays, he's worth a flyer at best. Other than that, you just sort of need to keep an eye on the news for Memphis. They're they're an impossible team to talk about right now. We need to know who's going to be the starters. So all that information, we need to get that information out first before I can be confident in anything. Otherwise, everybody looks like shit. Memphis sucks. All these guys suck. Um, you know, Jarrell Martin, if he's playing 38 minutes, yeah, um, I'm interested at 5,000 on FanDuel for sure. Uh, dude, just keep shooting. But if I had to look at anybody right now, it's Jarrell Martin, Jermichael Green, Marc Gasol. That's probably it for me. Um, but I need more information on them, and it's hard to, it's hard to be confident with that right now. Uh, it's just, they're playing, they've played 16 different guys in the past two weeks. Uh, that's, that's really hard to do. Uh, not expecting to see Tyreek Evans tonight. He's out for some sort of family emergency, so... Only guy that I would actually be interested in isn't even going to play, so. Coughing. Uh, yeah, Jarrell Martin, Jermichael Green, Marc Gasol. Don't think too much into it. Minnesota sucks. I mean, Memphis sucks. <laughs> then we've got the Suns hosting the Boston Celtics. I've got the Suns as seven-point underdogs at home. Uh, this line is not out yet either. Uh, still up in the air whether we see Booker or Warren. Uh, both are questionable, so I have them both in right now. 
Um, if Booker plays, I have a little bit of interest in it. Um, if he doesn't, you know, we're obviously going to bump up guys like Troy Daniels. Um, I don't really like TJ Warren tonight. I guess Josh Jackson looks okay, but again, that's probably... It's going to be tough to take any of these guys now. With Booker and Warren having been out for a couple games, uh, some of the value plays for Phoenix have gone away as their salaries have risen. So, you know, I'd, I'd maybe take a look at Marquise Chris at 4,400, 3,800 on DK. But I don't have a ton of confidence here. Alex Lynn at 5,300, 4,700 on DK is probably the best of the low price center options. He went for 34 in 27 minutes uh, two nights ago. Um, he's probably the guy that I would look at the most in this game. Unless I knew that Booker was playing for sure. Otherwise, I would like Booker would be my number two. Marquise Chris is going to come up a lot on the optimizer. And I probably need to knock him back just a little bit just to uh, avoid anything ridiculous. And he's probably still going to pop up. That's fine. Finally, we'll go to Boston. Not the sexiest slate. Um, Celtics 108.5 implied total would be fifth. Uh, I have them as seven-point favorites in Phoenix. Uh, Terry Rozier coming off a huge scoring game um, last night. So Boston on the back-to-back, be aware of that. Uh, exceptional matchup, obviously. Uh, Rozier at 7,100 is someone that I definitely like tonight. Um, Al Horford at 6,800, 6,300 on DK. Not super married to the idea of him, um, but he should be able to be... His smarts should play really well here against the Suns, who are just... Super dumb defensively. <laughs> uh, Tatum and Brown, you know, GPP only guys for me. Same sort of way if Marcus Morris plays, um, you know, just a GPP guy for me. Uh, I think a, a Greg Monroe flyer in a GPP could be interesting. It's sort of a, a half revenge game for him. But the guy I want the most here would probably be Terry Rozier. Sorry, guys. Not much to talk about. These are uh, relatively uneventful games tonight. Not the sexiest five-game slate we've ever had. But that's okay. We'll figure it out. Uh, I will be live tonight. I know it's just a five-game slate. It's usually one I kind of avoid, but I want to start the awesomeo.com era off um, with a bang. So let's, uh, let's do a live stream tonight. Let's have some fun. Um, let's bump up the randomness. We'll see what we get. Shocked. So many Lakers, so much Trey Burke, so much Booker, so much Rozier. Nope, not trying to save it, just trying to sort it. Okay, so let's grab Trey Burke first. And let's grab... Terry Rozier. So that takes me out of Lonzo, which is fine. I'd like Kuzma. Um, let's see, at small forward. I feel like Bielitsa is probably my smartest bet. So let's grab him. And then we've got five lineups here. What do we think looks the best? So we get some Jokic and some Brook Lopez. I think of all the lineups that I see here, I would be most comfortable, if we knew that Booker was in, I would be most comfortable with this first one. Um, and then probably, <sighs> Probably this one. Um, I like the idea of getting Tim Hardaway Jr. in there. Hmm. I think builds are going to be tough. I'm glad I'm playing a lot of lines tonight. Check out DK. Uh, so I know I normally say this in every video, but this time it's really true. Um, I will be around all day for questions, so feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Uh, 
in the comments section on YouTube, um, you know, I'll be around because this is now officially my job and I am going to be around 24 seven. So you will hear from me pretty quickly. Uh, feel free to reach out. It's a whole new world now, guys. Life is good. It really couldn't be better. Mm. These videos and my projections and posts that normally happen um, will be coming out a little bit later um, moving forward. Uh, before I was getting up at 4.30 and churning this stuff out, uh, trying to get it in before I went to work. Uh, now that that's the case, there is no way in hell I'm waking up at 4.30 any longer. Um, that shit is gone by the wayside. So, uh, you know, right now it's 8.16. Um, I'll probably have these up somewhere in this sort of neighborhood moving forward. Um, I'm going to shoot to get up in, in the 6 to 6.30 window. Um, so, just so people know the schedule. But we'll document that uh, at awesomeo.com um, once we get everything together. It's going to be a big first week. We've got to roll out baseball shortly, so which you'll be getting from me as well. Not sure how we're going to handle all of that, <clears throat> whether I do two a day, certainly have the time. So that's probably the most likely scenario, but it'll depend on slate size. I won't go out of my way to do a recording on a four game NBA slate if there's 14 baseball games or stuff, but we'll, we'll make the balance work. Um, all right, so we'll stick with Trey Burke. feel like I need to grab Marquise Chris just because it's DK. That gives me Towns. I'm comfortable with Kuzma. Towns. Kuzma. Okay. Let's get Randall. Uh, don't like either of those, so we need to back off of something here. Back off of Randall. Don't get to Kemba at all. Simmons and Lamb. Lamb is 61. I'll entertain Lamb there. Nope, I don't want Devin Harris. Overwhelming amount of Devin Harris for some strange reason. I guess this would be the one I would look at first out of everything that's popped up. Ish, Trey Burke, Wilson Chandler, Marquise Chris, Nikola Jokic, KCP, Kuzma Towns. I think that actually looks the best from a balanced perspective. I don't know, we'll see. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, if you're looking for me for now on, um, awesomeo.com is the spot you want to head to. My projections are still at my website, so those links still apply. Um for now, but all content that I'm going to have moving forward is going to be at uh, awesomeo.com. It's up there on the top. Uh, we're still working on all of the rebranding of everything. This channel is gonna go away. Well, this channel is not gonna be a DFS channel any longer. Um, we will have an, an awesomeo branded channel. So we'll transition that. Shouldn't make a difference to you guys outside of just sub subscribing to that one. Um, I'll probably start doing like let's play videos and stuff on some sports games um, moving forward on this channel. So if you're not interested in that, you'd probably want to go ahead and unsubscribe in the near future. I don't mind. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, awesomeo.com is where you want to be. Um, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to be significantly more active there as well. Hit me up in the comments. But now this is, this is life. Um, so any question you have, hit me up. Best of luck tonight. I'll see you guys at six.